What's the picture you have on your mind when you say 10 years time, 20 years time? What are you thinking of when you just think about purpose and all the madness that is in the world? What kind of picture do you have? Let me give you three things that I hope can frame it for you. What's the big ultimate picture you have? Number one, I would say purpose must be a pursuit to serve, not to be served. What are you dreaming of? What are you running for? Purpose must be a pursuit to serve, not to be served. When you think about the pictures of your heart, I pray the Holy Spirit will start to correct you in line of what God calls us to. That you, you don't sit down and you're building this dream of how the world will serve you and you, my brothers will serve me, every my members of my household will serve me. Listen, listen, what it means to be a Christian. The Son of Man is laying down his life to serve, not to be served. Now, does this mean we will not be served? No, but that's not even the point of our conversation. The point of our conversation is that we're in a pursuit to lay down our lives and serve. We see this as a burning desire to say God is calling us to live our lives in such a way that we're living it in service. And maybe you're sitting there and saying, but Joseph had a dream to be served. Listen, Joseph never pursued a dream to be served. Joseph happened to have a picture, a picture of something happening. But tell me one day when Joseph lived his life pursuing people serving him. Joseph lived his entire life pursuing service. And then somewhere along the line, this picture comes alive. Oh, really? And it never even meant one thing to him. What mattered all the way is not that I would be the greatest in my house, my brothers would serve me. That's witchcraft. Purpose drives us in a heart of love to serve. Number two, purpose is a pursuit to give, not to have. And you're sitting down and thinking of your picture of 20 years time and everything I want to have. Can I just help you this morning? We are called. Having is not a destination. We're called to give. We're called to give. To lay down. To pour out. Listen, we can only give what we have. And so having is a part of the journey to give. But it's not our dream. Don't wake up and cross your legs and you're planning how you can have. Think usefulness. Why do you have resources? To use it, to give it. Not to find any security in life. We don't lay up treasures on the earth. There is no security you build by, by, by keeping one account. It's a scam. Are you hearing me? It's, it's selfishness. You belong to community, to be in that dream of do good to all, especially those of the household, to contribute, to be a part of what God is doing. And then you are building like the rich fool and saying, now I have. That conversation of trying to have, all right, is a conversation against God's plan for your life. The plan of God for your life is an invitation to give. To give more, you will have more. It's like becoming a pipeline, right? That I'm dreaming of, if God works a dream in your heart, to give children in Africa education. Do you know what that means for what you have? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know what that means for what you have? But that's not even the point. When Jesus says things about rich people, and that's maybe we'll get to that another day. But when Jesus says things about rich people and what to him who is rich and how he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, and all that, yeah, yeah, you just ignore it, you skip it. <laughs> Do you know why Jesus says that thing? If your life ever comes to a point where you are defined by what you have, there's a problem. Our life should be defined by our generosity, not by what we have. Let me look at somebody say he's talking to you. Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear? Look at somebody say, why are you sweating? He's talking to you. Let's receive God's word. Third thing this morning, purpose is a pursuit to journey, not to arrive. It's a pursuit to journey, not to arrive. It's a pursuit to journey, not to arrive. You know many times as you grow up, you, you just, young people, we just have that mindset of when I said to. <laughs> when I said to, <laughs> you know, I, I know that when I said to, ah, I will, you know, when you said to, <laughs> said to, hmm. come on kids, let me start to learn, when, when I said to, when I said to, when I said to, I will, ah, in fact, God knows that when I said to, I'm going to fund the gospel in Africa. I will be a donor to the gospel in Africa. I will feed homeless children and take them off the streets. I will start a foundation. I will, when I said to. Give offering and tithe. No, when I said to. You are a liar and a manipulator. You are trying to get God to buy into your plan. 
So you think you can bribe God that God, if God gives me money, I will give him money. He would rather not give you. He will just give the person that is generous. <laughs> it's that simple. It's that simple. I will feed homeless children in Africa. There is a child around you that is hungry. What have you done for him or her? I always tell people, when you do something for that one, you're already feeding hungry children in Africa now. Yeah. You're already doing it. Stop all this uh, in 10 years' time. My purpose is when I'm 60, there's that one big thing that I'm made to do. Purpose is not a place you go to. It's a journey you travel. It's an inclination you live every day of your life with. It's not about what you will do for your children. It's about how you treat the fuel attendants today. It's not what I will do when I have my grandchildren and we take them on vacation to Bahamas. It's about how you treat people today. It's about how you treat your co-worker today. It's about the inclinations of your heart that says the Son of Man comes seeking to serve, not to be served. Purpose is about a burning passion with which you live every day of your life. It's an inclination with which you walk. It's how you wake up. It's how you live your life. Purpose is not about a destination. It is about a journey. It's about a journey. Maybe you're there and you're saying, no, but no, Jesus was born to die. His purpose was to go on the cross. Listen, Jesus was born. If he was just born to die, he would have just been born. He would climb the cross and die. Jesus was born and he traveled a 33-year journey. Everything he did in those 33 years was as important as going up the cross. I'll tell you why. What you find eventually is that the journey is as important as the destination. In those 33 years, as he inclined his heart towards serving and loving and looking out for people, do you know what he was doing? He was traveling a journey to the big one. But it was not about just sitting down here. And then one day, they just bring a cross and say, hey, that's the cross. No. Purpose is a journey that you will travel, not a destination you will arrive. It is how you handle little as much as it is how you handle much. It is how you, he that is faithful in little. Jesus says he's faithful in much. Luke 16. He that is faithful in little is faithful in much. Not that he that, because he's little, he's unfaithful. When he has much, he will become faithful. No! Jesus says, he that is faithful in little is faithful. Not even will be. He says, he is faithful. In other words, what you call little, God calls much. It's just perspective. You are saying the hinge of the door is little. God is saying the hinge is holding the whole door. What you call little, God calls much. It's just perspective. Purpose is a pursuit to journey, not to arrive. It is about a becoming. It's about a becoming. Purpose is not that one big thing you will do. It's not just that one thing. It's an inclination that we live our lives with.